Hello, hello, good evening. We are live and I am happy, happy that you're here. My name is Sandra Jennings and you have tuned into Passion Speak where we give those with a passion a platform to speak. And tonight we're going to talk with the gentleman who is the creator of the U.S. Notary Agency and the Notary Cashflow Academy. His name is Tiger Toledo. He's a three-time best-selling author. You can find him on Amazon. If, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you. We appreciate your time and your attention. Um, if not, thank you for returning. Uh, I'm going to bring Tiger in. Um, he's I met Tiger a couple of years ago. And well, let me just let he's di he's dynamic. Wait till you see him. Hi, Tiger. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. What's up? Hey. How are you, Sandra? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy that you you decided to join me to talk about uh, being a notary and your journey and how you've managed to successfully launch this and write books about it and create a, a cash flow academy. I'm really kind of excited because uh, I don't know where I said this at. I think in one of my announcements of you, I had said I have been a notary for like 18 or 20 years. I think 18 years and it was a corporate notary. So I didn't do it privately. And let me just apologize because Tiger and I have been having technical difficulties today and you've been bleeping out. So you're back. Now you're out. So wow. um, we're going to continue to hear you, Tiger, even though your video um, may bleep out on us. So um, we know that you're still there. I can tell that. Yeah, you're can you hear there. me though? Yes, I can hear you. I hope okay. I want to see your lovely face so you can tell us all about it. And I'd love to share my lovely face with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, um, let's try this. Yeah, this is so weird. But I want to I want to say this. Um, now you're muted. Okay, hold on. Now you're back on. Okay. Now you okay. It's going in and out. You're getting muted and you're back back on. I don't know what's going on. I usually have technical difficulties. So I have uh you know I have empathy for you, brother. It's just I get it. I totally get it. Um, but anyway, I wanted to see your face be when you I'm sorry, there, it, it, I'm just really having uh some difficulties. technical difficulties. It happens, it happens, it's okay, it happens. Um, can you, can you hear me, Sandra? I can hear you very nicely and we have no interruptions. So, um, I said camper. Okay. Um, okay. So I can see you just fine. I okay. wanted to mention how you and I met. We actually, uh, a, a relative of mine from Chicago where you're currently located originally from New York but you're currently working in Chicago, working out of Chicago and your family, or you and your family stationed there. And um, my cousin lived in Chicago. She introduced me to you and I said, oh, okay. So you and I got connected and my first live seeing you, you shared a story that just moved me to tears. It was a story about your mother. Do you remember that story? Oh, vividly. Okay. Vividly. I need you to share that story, and I'm not gonna cry. I okay. cry. Okay, I'm gonna try little, not to cry, right? I'm gonna take this look, this remove me button. But yes, please share that story because it, it's so vital to your growth. Yeah, because um, the story is actually my turning point into wanting to become an entrepreneur. Uh, so I'm first generation American. My family is from Haiti. Um, so our, you know, their English wasn't the best, right? So my mom uh, worked for a home care, uh, I guess for a lot of immigrants would come to New York and they would become home care attendants, right? Mm -hmm. So my mom worked for a company called Personal Touch in Jamaica, Queens. And she would bring me along to her training so I could interpret what they're saying. Um, so at the time my mom was battling diabetes, it was starting to take a, a toll on her health wise right and again excuse me if i get choked up right because i get choked okay. up every time i tell the story 
Uh, so one day um, during the training, after the training was done, there was a gentleman. I've never seen this guy before in the whole office, but this young guy uh, asked my mom to come into the office and say, hey, Ms. Toledo, I need to talk to you before you go. Can you sit down? So my mom brings me in. We're sitting at the table. I'm sitting on the left, uh, her right side. And the young guy begins to say how great of a job my mom is doing. She's been with the company for seven years. We love everything that you've been doing. Unfortunately, we've seen that it's been getting harder for you to get around. So by my orders, I'm going to have to let you go. So right there on the spot, my mom was fired. Now, I'm, I'm about like 14, 15 years old, and I'm sitting on the side. I'm really not paying attention to the conversation because it's grown people talking, right? And all of a sudden, I see my mom just bursting out in tears. I've never seen my mom cry in front of total strangers before. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, now I'm getting like, what's going on? What did he do to you, mom? You know, and I, at that point, my mom started begging this guy, please, how am I going to take care of my son? How am I going to pay for rent? I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go from here. And, she, you know, her her health is is decreasing at the same time. So she's like, man, I can't catch a break right now. Um, let me fix this. So she's like, I can't catch a break right now. Wow. Mm-hmm. This is I, I'm so sorry. I have no That's idea why it keeps It has going. something to do with your lighting because I noticed when we add light, it, it could be something with your wiring. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. So at that point, my mom begs this guy for her job back in. He said, there's nothing I can do. My hands are tied, right? We're, we're probably going to have to do it this way with a different camera. Okay, that's fine. If it's okay. That's okay. Um, so at that moment, I've never felt more helpless in my life because there was nothing that I can do to help my mother out. She, you know, like I'm 15 years old. I did not have a skill. I didn't have a job. I didn't have anything. So I was solely dependent on her. Um on the whole train ride back, my mom is crying, and it, the train ride is about an hour and 30 minutes uh, back to Brooklyn, and she just cried and cried and cried and cried, and it was just like, you know, like, it was such a terrible feeling, like, there's nothing I can do, and back in back in those days, you're for young kids like myself to get a skill, it was usually in criminal activities, right? Um, and I did not want to go that route because all of my friends was going that route. It was like, no. So we wind up going, um, she wind up getting public assistance. We had the old food stamps. I mean, like the paper food stamps, right? Mm-hmm. And there was, I remember it like it was yesterday. Every time those food stamps would come in, she we would go to, a uh, supermarket, the big supermarket in Brooklyn, and she would, as soon as we walk through that door and the air conditioner and hit, hits your face and you see all of this stuff, she says, buy whatever you want. Just get whatever you want. That, I'm not going to stop you from getting it. Just get whatever you want. And at that moment, Sandra, I felt rich. And I, I got to feel what a rich person might feel like. Like, you could get whatever you want on in here. And from that point, I was like, you know what? I do not want to work for people um, in my life. I don't want to be in that position. I don't want my kids to see me in that position. So at that point, I made that decision. Like, I have to work on. Now, I wish I had a a fairy tale story to say, like, I never had a job. But no, I had a bunch of jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But it was always it was always the same goal. It was like, I'm the spook that sat by the door. I'm looking to see how companies are ran, how companies have an infrastructure, what are they doing with their employees? And I took notes. I took notes for years and then I just rolled it out into my notary business. So this is the first business that actually became successful. I had a, I had about nine practice runs. 
<laughs> just nine. Yeah, just nine. <laughs> I had a few. I had a few myself. <laughs> so, okay. So tell me, how did you, uh, we talked previously and you were telling me your business is only a few years old, but how did you start the business that you have? How did you become a notary? How did you start your notary agency and, and your cash flow academy? Sure. So, um, I was driving a truck at the time. That was a job I hated, by the way. Um, worst job ever because I, because I was, I'm a natural extrovert. So I like meeting people. I like being around. I'm a mover and shaker. When you're driving a truck, you're stuck in a truck for like 15 to 17 hours a day. So I, as you guys can see, I have Red Bulls and Starbucks. Like I bounce off walls. Like now I'm stuck in this box. I got all this high energy. And I'm like, get me out of here. I'm banging on the <laughs> steering wheel. I'm like, ah, I'm going nuts, right? And I was like, I got to get out of here. I really, really got to get out of here. So there's that old saying that goes, you are, um, you are the closest five friends that are around you, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm so, six people. Right, right. So mm -hmm. I called all five of my friends and I was like, can you give me a solution on how to get out of this business? I hate this job. Somebody tell me something and nobody could tell me anything. So at that point I realized like my circle sucks <laughs> and um, I started going online and looking for people and I ran into a gentleman by the name of Andre Hatchett that was, he was just rolling out his online um, training system for the notary business school. So since I'm trapped in the truck for 15, 17 hours, I started to learn um, all of the mechanics of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the guy that owned the trucks, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, the guy that owned the truck, I was making him hella money, by the way, because I would run nonstop. And when the money started flowing in, he started going to more parties. His his clothing changed. He got the gold Rolex now. I'm like, oh, this guy is really stunting now, right? And unfortunately, he wasn't making his truck payments. So one day they, they repossessed the truck that I was actually driving in. And just like that, I, you know, I was out of a job, right? Um, so now I'm back in the real world where I can start implementing the notary stuff. So I, I filed for my commission, but at that time I couldn't get my commission quick enough. It took like, like some weird number, like four months or five months for me to get it. But in the meantime, I rolled out my marketing plan. So I'm starting to get phone calls. I'm starting to get phone calls. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. Like, and I can't notarize the documents, right? I'm sorry. Let me uh, mute this. So I'm getting all of these phone calls and I can't service these clients. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like this, I don't like giving away money like that. <laughs> I didn't like giving away money. So I was like, I got to find a solution. So I said, you know what? In the academy, it it explains something about building an agency. I learned about the agency side of things, and then I started to farm out the notary assignments to different notaries all around Illinois. It became so successful that I started reaching out to notaries in Indiana, in uh, Michigan, and New Jersey, and all these other places, and it just blossomed from there. So five months later, I wound up getting up my commission. And I started running appointments as well. Now, when I got my commission, it gave me more intelligence because now I can get into a person's house and see what a notary sees. Okay. And by me see, being able to identify, okay, here's a problem here, here's a problem here. I said, let me document all of this knowledge that I'm, I'm accumulating. And I poured it into the academy, not to really sell, but just to, you know, I guess, archive my diaries, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it got to the point where notaries would ask me, you know, how, how do I work 
for you or how do I work with you or how do I get to the level that you're at? And I was like, all right, well, you guys can look at some of my videos that I I created for myself. Just pay me five dollars or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just it just blossomed from there. I so that was it. Yeah. It, oh. uh, I'm I'm always learning from it. I'm I'm on twenty four seven. I I I just love it. Uh, I have to say I I like being a notary as well. Uh, it I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. and so it helped me connect. I connect best with people one on one. So I like the notarizing side of it. Whereas you like you say you like the 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 re outreach and the marketing. But anyway, so. You told me you said something to me before, and uh, you were talking about um, you. I can just go to notary. I can just go to YouTube, and I can learn how to notarize papers. And the more document legal documents you learn how to notarize, of course, the more money you're gonna make because you get paid by the signature or by the document, right? Mm -hmm. But something that your Cash Flow Academy does, by the way viewers who want to avail themselves they can use a little discount code because you got a class coming up on september 14 but anyway so you were saying um it's much more profitable for you to teach me how to work my notary business because you know i'm not my stepfather was a notary public and we had this little sign that we put in the window at the house and people used to stop by the house and pay him five dollars and he would notarize their documents i know i watched him you know watched him work for many many years awesome but but he never marketed it it was just that little sign that was in the window that and I guess, you know, word of mouth, people kind of know and they see the long, little sign. Oh, there's a notary there. And, you know, we got to get this document signed. But your academy teaches us how to market it. Is that right? Absolutely. What can I learn? So here's the thing. Like my, my natural background is sales and marketing. The only reason why I got into the trucking industry is because everything like 2008, the housing market went down and I was in uh, the home remodeling um, sales department. Um, so that is my background is sales and marketing. What I teach in the academy is very unique from everyone else because I have about 15 to 17 years of sales and marketing experience. So I know what works, I know what what doesn't work. And in the notary industry, they have never seen anything like this before. The reason is this notary business can be traced all the way back to Egyptian times, right? Like, like there are scribes in the pyramid mm -hmm. right now uh, explaining that there were notaries back then. So that's how, that's how ancient this, this industry is. They haven't seen technology like what we're using today to, to talk to people all around the world. It hasn't seen um, people doing remote online notarizations before. It haven't seen Calendly and, and and StreamYards and all of the so it's brand new. It's a it's a market that is wide open. So what I what I teach the students is it's great that you know how to do loan closings. It's great that you know how to do quick claim deeds and warranty deeds. But how do you get the clients? How do you know how to price yourself? How do you know what to say when a client calls you on the phone and you don't sound like a basement warrior, you're operating out of your basement or anything like that. And there's nothing wrong with it because I still work in my house, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you want to give the perception of a big company feel. So I teach people how to give their their company a big company feel. I teach them how to answer the phone correctly because you don't know if a law firm is calling you. You don't know if a uh, title or escrow company is calling you. You don't know if Merrill Lynch and Charles Schwab is calling you. Trust me, they, they're they expecting a certain level of uh, professionalism and they're expecting you to kind of like have a cookie cutter script. What's funny is a lot of notaries say, I don't want to read off of a script because it makes me sound robotic. And I always come back with the question, well, does Will Smith sound like a robot when he's reading off of his script? 
does Denzel Washington sound like a robot when he's reading off of his script? Scripts work. That's what that's what they're designed to do. So I created this uh, two hundred and fifty dollar uh, call script for notaries, and it it, it blew up. I should have actually released that before I released my actual book. Um, and it just helps so many notaries all across the United States increase their profit margin. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing is, is that notaries didn't realize they, they can charge for certain services. I'll give you an example. Somebody would want to get a power of attorney, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in the state of Illinois, it's required that you have a third party witness that is non-related not married into the family. So a lot of clients do not want people in their business like that. Even though they grew, they, they grew up around the next door neighbor for 20 years, they don't want to invite their neighbor into something so personal. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, yeah, I don't have anybody. So what we would do is like, we would, I would teach the notaries, you can charge to provide a third party witness. You know, cousin Joe that sits on the couch and watches Netflix all day, tell him, hey, come with me, man. I'm gonna give you 40 bucks. You charge the client $90, you give JoJo $40, and you go and execute that notarization. Now everything works smoothly. The client is happy, JoJo's definitely happy. You're happy because you got the job and the notarization it's a win-win situation for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, another situation would be, all right, if you're going to um, a hospital, especially if it's downtown during rush hour, you can charge accordingly for that. Just like FedEx, if you need this same day service, they charge you for overnight shipping versus ground shipping, right? There's mm -hmm. a price difference on there. Mm -hmm. So teaching, the notaries how to price themselves correctly is huge and then i also teach them how to getting get leads from high quality lead sources because oh, that's the yeah. main thing um you want you don't want to go knocking door to door or making a bunch of cold calls to get clients you want them banging down your door ringing your phone two three times just to get you to uh, notarize their documents so I teach the sales and marketing side of the notary business. Okay, let me just, um, I'm gonna add your site to the stream real quick. Oh, sure, cool. Um, this is your website. This is one of them. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're miraculously linked. Yes, um, it's, it's a hub. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hub, okay. This is your latest book, Rise of the Smart Notary Evolution. Correct. And we can get that on uh, Amazon. And yes. then this is, has part of your YouTube in here. And then this is the class that I'm considering taking. It's a six week class mm -hmm. because although I've been notarized, I mean, I know how to do all documents basically, except I don't necessarily know how to market. And you were telling me that, um, and you can maybe even speak to this sure. thing that's coming up. I'm, I won't, but um, yeah, just, Real quick, talk to us about this, and then I'll finish what I was going to say. Which one, the crossroads? Yeah, the crossroads. Oh yeah, it's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal. So this guy, uh, Tekamaku, right? Uh, mm -hmm. He's out of East Oakland, California. He's like a a thrown rock away from Silicon Valley. So he's exposed to a lot of tech companies, right? Mm -hmm. um, all they think about is streamline automation, streamline automation. So. He read the first book that I wrote out, um, Rise of the Smart Notary. And he was able to dissect that book in a way that I've never seen dissected before. And he started rolling out different programs and different automation part of the business. I was like, wow, this is genius. So he taught me some of it and I actually implemented it in my business. And I was like, dude, this is, this is golden. So he kept going, he kept pushing forward, and he just got better and better and better to the point where I was like, hey, look, man, we got to do a class together. So I reached out to him, and now he's teaching automation and how to get really high quality, high paying customers through a, a, a lead source that he uses uh, religiously. 
Um, so, yeah. yeah, that class is is amazing. I actually sit in that class as a student. Okay, that might be one I might consider as well. But um, anyway, oh, what I was gonna say mm -hmm. was, uh, it, it, I lost my train of thought. I probably was leaning toward um, sources, lead sources, and um, how you, in your classes, I know because I've taken one of your classes, uh, you talk about some of the lead sources. I'm looking at my notes here. You talk about the SEOs on Google and how do you get customer acquisitions? And we won't talk about everything in your class, but that's part of what you talk about in your class. The next thing I wanted to ask um, on, I looked up one of your classes mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm, and I am busy. Like this class here, the black box mm -hmm. that starts on September 14th. I am busy every, it's like it meets on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Well, you know what I'm doing at 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. That's why I couldn't get you yesterday. You were probably teaching a class. We yeah. have to work on Wednesday. And I usually don't do Passion Speaks back to back. I have another one tomorrow because it doesn't give me a good enough time to do homework on the guests. You're busy, queen. I, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm, in, I'm really enjoying it. But what can I do as an alternative if I can't make your class? Like if I have to come in a half hour late, what, what's up with that? Well, I, I always recommend uh, coming in live because the, the energy is just like yeah. off the chain, right? Yeah. But you, you have access to all the replays. Okay. So when you sign up for the class, like the, the black box is specifically because I've never, ever taught a class for new notaries before. It was always for active notaries, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been getting so such an overwhelming um, inquiry about when are you going to do something for new notaries? I'm I'm just getting my commission. I just got my commission last week. I don't know where to start. This and that. So I was like, I am going to create a six week course specifically for new notaries on how to launch a successful notary business, not to be a successful notary public. Mm -hmm. but how to launch a successful notary business because it's a business at the end of the day. Right. Um, so yeah, you'll get access to all the replays plus the replays. We always create worksheets, um, infographics, all kinds of designs. So, and then you can leave comments on there to, as well. So you become this part of our notary 300 community. Okay. Okay, and I can get I can get my twenty percent off discount for that. Oh, you already know. You already know. I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Is there anything I missed, or you'd like to leave us with? I appreciate your time. Yeah, you know, at, at the end of the day, you guys, like whatever your goal is, you're gonna run into some obstacles. Um, don't don't give up. You know, and I know that it sounds so cliche to hear that. But it, it really is true. Look, I came to Chicago when my mom died and my father was already married with somebody else. And you know what I mean? Like they, they kind of like turned their back on me. I came to Chicago like I felt like an orphan. I was like, you know, young and I had one hundred and fifty dollars, a brown suitcase and a boom box with me. That's all I had to my name. I didn't have nothing today you know, like it, it, it's night and day and it's because I never gave up. So did I, come, you know, did I have to have jobs to get to where I'm at? Absolutely. But know what your end game plan is and just keep going, just keep going. And this person says, Hey, you're not going to succeed. You keep going. Hey, your business look like it's, you know, about to be doomed. Just keep going, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Find something to keep you 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 motivated, like music or or taking a jog or working out or whatever it is. Just stay in your mix, stay on your wave. It will work out. Find a out. passion and pursue it, huh? Find that passion for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tiger Toledo. I appreciate your time and talking with us. Um, and whoever's watching, thank you for watching Passion Speak, where we give those with a passion a platform to speak. We've been speaking with Tiger Toledo of the Notary Cash Flow. 
um, and you can look up or you can look down depending on where you're at and you can get all kind of links including a discount on his next class or one of the other classes that that is coming up and i appreciate your time tiger and much love oh, did to you give him your coupon code the per yeah the it's in there it should all be in there if i did okay cool movie. passion 1137 y'all yeah, yeah, type in Passion 1137. You guys cool. get like just a straight up 20% because Sandra is doing such a remarkable <laughs> job. You guys tune into her. She, she's doing something amazing here. Ah, oh, thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Have a great night. <laughs>